All right, so I've got my camera set up, and uh, I just got finished recording the you know the the first half or whatever of the next episode of Flashback, and I kind of realized that I'm I'm standing in front of all this stuff or standing next to all this stuff, and I figure a lot of people are going to ask questions about it, which which is not only fine but it's cool. But uh, I figured just maybe as like a little teaser uh, for the next episode, I would talk about this. So this is kind of like my shrine. Uh, to the NES. And by the way, since I said, you know, oh, maybe I'll do a game room tour series or something, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, let's talk about things in context. So as long as I'm standing here, we'll talk about this a little bit. So uh, this is not a shelf that you ever see on the show, uh, just because norm- this is sort of on the opposite end of the room. Uh, and I realize saying that makes it sound like I'm in like a really big room, which I'm not. This is just a pretty standard sized bedroom. Um, but, you know, normally this camera is turned that way and like over in the opposite corner is where sort of my main game shelf, if you want to call it that is. Um, but I have this shelf and uh, I kind of just set it up. It's funny, uh, a- Anthony, you know, Anthony from uh, Retro Blast, who now, by the way, has a show on YouTube about VR uh, called the VR Roundtable. It's a pretty cool show. Um, I don't play VR, but even then I still think it's kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, he came in here one time and saw this and was like, oh dude, you're such a collector. Cause he's not a collector at all. He just likes to play games. But I mean, I'm a little bit of both. I, you know, it's almost like being a game collector in certain circles has like turned into like a four letter word or something. But you know, I've been collecting this stuff for like 20 something years or something, you know, so it's, it's fine with me, you know? Uh, anyway, um, so uh, I, I guess you guys can kind of see some of the stuff up here. I don't want to tilt the camera up just because it's, I like the way it's pointed. But uh, there's nothing, the only thing up here, uh, somebody sent me, uh, I not for free, but I mean, I, I bought something off somebody on, on the forums, one of the forums, and they included this Super Mario Brothers lunch bag. And I remember him even saying like, hey, you should try to work this into your show sometime. And, um, you know, maybe I'll talk about, this or I'll, I'll show this more when I do like the launch of the NES or something just because I mean they freaking put Mario on everything back then um, but other than that up here there's not a lot of Nintendo stuff uh, the only other thing I'll show you because I think it's pretty neat uh, this is actually a Dixie cup dispenser uh, can you uh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not uh, there's not reflection but uh, for those of you who maybe don't know what a Dixie cup is they're like little disposable paper like wax paper cups and like if you go to the dentist's office, usually they'll still have them for you to use to rinse out your mouth. But uh, it, I don't know if they're popular anymore. It doesn't seem like it. But like back in the 80s, they sold a lot of these Dixie cup dispensers and you'd put the cups, see like the top is spring loaded. So you put the, the, the cups in there and uh, you'd put it in your bathroom. Uh, for just rinsing your mouth out with water or, or uh, mouthwash or whatever. And they licensed them, or some of them just had flower patterns on them or whatever. And then you could usually get matching cups. So I found this, like, I don't know, 10, 10 years ago or something in a thrift store. And it's funny, it still has the price tag on If you can read it, it says $250. Um, and at least back then, you could still sometimes find these cups on eBay. Like, you could buy... It'd be cool to have a little stack just to put in here, but, like, ultimately... I mean, what for? It just sits on the sits on the shelf, and I, I ended up paying more for the cups uh, than I paid for the uh, dispenser. So it's just real low priority. This is a Mad Magazine from. Uh, sorry, getting too close. Uh, this is Mad Magazine from January of 1990, and you can see it's got uh, Mario and uh, or I'm sorry, Mario and Luigi, and uh, uh, they're. Using those are like the mallets from Donkey Kong, I guess, and they're going to smash the screen. And there's like a pixelated picture of Alfred E. Newman, and then the Nintendo actually says uh, New Nintendo on it. Uh, so it's pretty cool, and it's funny. And so, and it even says up here like they talk about Nintendo video games. Maybe I'll actually uh, do like a mini read through, and we'll just look at that article. Like that would be kind of cool. Uh, and you know what's funny? Like video game stuff is so overpriced now, but you can still uh, you can still get this issue for like nothing. Like I. I probably paid two or three dollars for it. It's the same price as any other old issue of uh, of of Mad. And then um, I was in a comic book store like last year, and I was putting together a Secret Santa package for somebody. And I thought, oh, it'd be cool to have this magazine to put in there. And I got another copy for like three dollars. Like, wouldn't you think this would be like twenty bucks just because it has Mario on the cover? Like, I guess people don't know about it yet. So 
Uh, anyway, I'll just put this. I'll put that back later, and I'll waste your time. Uh, and then, so then we get here. This is the actual. So this is the NES shrine, if you want to call. It. I don't actually call it that, but I had to call the video something. And um, this is certainly not all of my Nintendo games, although uh, I don't have a huge collection of NES games. Just I used to, and then I got NeverDrive, and like now I have every Nintendo game I have. I think I have kind of for a reason, and all the other ones I just got rid of. So um, uh, this is one of these. Uh, you know, it's like a, a veneer uh, Nintendo game holder. It's got a little, I don't know if you can see it, it's got like a little Nintendo sticker on it. And uh, it holds uh, 18 games. And they've all got their little black covers here. And so over here what I have is, uh, I have all my black label games. I got like, you know, Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, Excite Bike, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, then there's Mario 2, Mario 3. You probably can't see these because of the glare. That's actually Zelda and uh, Zelda 2, because they're gold, right? So they're, you get the, the glare, and then I've got uh, Kid Icarus and Metroid, and then I don't know why these are over here. It just seemed appropriate to put these here. I've got uh, all three of the Castlevania games, plus uh, Contra, Final Fantasy, and uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. And I used to have a game over here that was in a Funko Land sleeve, but I think I must have moved it, because that, that's gone. Uh, and then what else do we have over here? So um, we have... Uh, a couple of Famicom cartridges. Nothing special about either one of them. Uh, this is the Famicom version of Solomon's Key. That's one of my absolute favorite Nintendo games, and not one that you hear hear about too often. Uh, actually, this is a, uh, this was originally a Tecmo arcade game, and got uh, ported or converted over to the Famicom and NES. And then uh, behind it, I've got um, this is just a box copy of Super Mario Brothers USA. This is, of course what we got as Super Mario Brothers 2. They, uh, you know, they released it here first, because of course in Japan it was Doki Doki Panic on the uh, disc system, I think. And then uh, this game was so popular here that they re-released it in Japan on a cartridge, and then they called it Super Mario Brothers USA. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, I don't remember what the story is with uh, this little Mario figurine. I don't know where I got it. Uh, and then I've got one uh, Game and Watch. Uh, this is uh, Donkey Kong 2. And I'll just just to show you. There's no batteries in it, so I can't really show you too much. But um, you know, it's got that same little D-pad that the NES controllers have. This is sort of like uh, I love when people say stuff like this. But Donkey Kong 2 is sort of on permanent loan to the CGQ archives. This actually belongs to my friend Tony, and Tony's kind of a weird guy. He'll never. He'll definitely not sell you anything. But he doesn't want to give you anything and let you keep it. But he's, he, which is, it sounds weird because he, he's like the most generous guy I know. But it's like if you want anything of his, here, just take it. But he's not actually giving it to you. Like, like somehow in theory, he might want it back in like 10 years, even though he won't. But uh, I mean, he's the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off of his back, except he'd be like, hey, I might want that back someday. Um, but I mean, great guy. Uh, and then behind that, I've got, I don't have the matching. Uh, Lunchbox, because again, I, I just got this at a thrift store, but this is a uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, Zelda 2 Adventure of Link uh, Thermos, like an Aladdin Thermos. So this would have come with, uh, see, it's got the little, come on, you guys remember that? My mom, my mom used to pack my lunch, she'd give me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then she'd put milk in this. And so I used to just flip this little thing down and drink milk. And it, it's funny, because I just remember, it would always, you could never get the milk smell out of these things, even though, I mean, she would wash it, but it's just, you drink it and you could kind of smell like yesterday's milk or, or whatever. But, um, I believe that the matching lunchbox for this is plastic, not metal. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, lunchboxes were metal and, you know, they would get beat up cause you'd drop them and they would get dents in them. And then eventually they would start to rust and, you know, or the handle would break and then you'd need a new one. But, um, you know, usually these would be fine. So you'd end up You'd end up with a cabinet full of thermoses and just you'd only have one like working lunchbox. Um, and then what else? I got some more interesting stuff over here. Uh, this is just the, the Honeybee uh, Famicom to NES converter. It's just the most well-known uh, converter. Um, and that, that would let you play, uh, say, this game uh, on your NES. Uh, you just plug it in. For some reason, you have to plug it in backwards. Uh, you just put that in there and then you would just slide that into your NES and it came with this... Uh, red ribbon so that you could pull it out because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it out because uh, you don't have the little tab uh, to grab 
And then uh, I'm not going to put that back because I want to show you what's uh, underneath it here. Um, we'll just quickly. So this is like uh, I don't remember what game this is. I want to say it's Gyromite, but I don't. Uh, w when I got this, it didn't have the the shell anymore. It's not. It's not like I threw the shell away because I wouldn't do that. But um, uh, very early versions of it. There was Gyromite and a couple others. Maybe Excite Bike. I don't remember. But of launch games where maybe they didn't have enough of the American-style PCBs to go around. So Nintendo actually made these uh, Famicom to NES converters, and they were in the cartridges. And so you could actually, you know, if you see one of those cartridges, you can pick it up and kind of feel like how much does it weigh. And uh, if it seems a little bit heavier, it probably has one of these in it. And um, so, I mean, you would just literally just pull... Uh, this is so that, that's a Famicom PCB, like I said, I think Gyromite. And then you could put any Famicom cartridge on here you want, and you don't have to take uh, the board out or anything. And uh, I think I had this before I found um, the, the Honeybee converter. So that, that's why I have both. Uh, I don't really need either one, because at this point, if I'm going to play a Famicom game, uh, I would just use my EverDrive. And then I think these next two things are, are in my opinion, pretty cool. Maybe, maybe you won't agree, but so... Uh, two fairly unnoteworthy games. We have uh, Top Gun and uh, Tiger Heli. Both pretty good games. I mean, Top Gun was pretty popular, I remember, when I was a kid. Uh, my friend Stuart had it and he used to play it. And then uh, Tiger Heli is a, is a decent uh, shooter. But what's cool about this, and I, I found these both at the same time, is, and hopefully you'll be able to see this on, on camera. In fact, I'm going to put it up close just to make sure you can see it here. Um, the label there, you see it says... Uh, Tengen Library, uh, Tiger Heli, NES, cartridge number 68, and then it has a property tag, Time Warner Interactive, and then, uh, you know, an address, and then 408 would be the area code for, like, Silicon Valley, Santa Cruz, that area, and then the same thing here. So, uh, what these cartridges were, were, um, these would have been at the offices of Tengen, and they would have been something where if, if the developers, the programmers working there uh, wanted to play another game because they wanted to maybe see a mechanic, gameplay mechanic, or just for research purposes, or maybe even just to play a game, they could go over and pull one of these off the shelf. So both of these games came out of the uh, Atari Tengen offices, um, you know, probably in Sunnyvale or something. I don't really know. I found these in Sacramento at like a store that sells like used CDs and DVDs and whatnot that I, I used to go to quite a bit. And um, I think the fact that these labels are on here don't really probably increase the value. Uh, not that I care, but it certainly makes them really cool. And in their own way, it makes them kind of one of a kind. And these are cartridge number 67 and 68. So it's kind of weird that they're sequential, but that means that there are a lot more of these floating around out there, and hopefully, hopefully some of them are in the hands of people instead of just, you know, hopefully they didn't end up in a landfill or, or something. Um, uh, next, I've got uh, a, a Game Genie. Um, I could tell a whole story about Galoob. I actually met the, the guy, Galoob. Galoob is someone's last name, and I met this guy. And uh, if anybody... Uh, follows me on Instagram, and I'm not saying that because I want you to follow me on Instagram. I'm just making a reference. Like I posted a picture on Instagram a couple weeks ago. Uh, I, I had just bought uh, the Man Machine by Craftwork, and I, I had it on the turntable. And I posted a picture because my turntable is black and red, and the cover of the album is black and red, and it just looked like they were made for each other. But uh, anyway, that turntable I bought from this Galoob guy. Um, and I, I asked him because, I mean, he didn't, it's not like I went in the guy's house and he's like, hey, do you know who I am? It was just, I didn't even know that was a last name at all, like Galoob. And I mean, it sounds like it's something else backwards or something. And, and so I had to ask him, like, you know, it's a very unique name. Do you have anything, uh, is there any connection between you and the toy company Galoob? And he's like, oh yeah, that was my family's company. Which made sense because this was in like the middle of a very nice neighborhood in San Francisco. And this guy had a real nice house. And uh, I went into his house, like he was selling, this was not a cheap turntable, and he was getting rid of it because he was buying like an even nicer one. So um, I always thought it'd be cool to have like a custom turntable mat or something made that either had like the, the Game Genie logo on it or Galoob. Or of course, Galoob made Micro Machines, which were a huge deal uh, back in the late, uh, the late 80s. But anyway, uh, Game Genie. And then I think I also, yeah, I have the, um, this is the book that would have come with the Game Genie. And then I also have, uh, I think I'm missing one, not positive. I'm, 
I believe I saw one online that I don't have, but I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm just going to show you one as an example. So um, these are these uh, How to Win at Nintendo Games uh, books by this guy, Jeff Rovin. And uh, Jeff Rovin, not a gamer. He's just like a writer. Like I, I looked him up one time and like he's sort of ghost written books for other people. He's just a professional writer, which there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying he's not he's not like some kind of famous games journalist. And he wrote a ton of these. And so these are these like paperback. I mean, obviously it's a paperback book, but I feel like this isn't as popular anymore. But um, when I was a kid, like you'd go to like the drugstore, you go to like, you know, like around here we had Long's Drugs, which became CVS or, you know, uh, if you go to Walgreens, any place like that, they would have books like this with the magazines. And uh, like this book was uh, 3 dollars uh, back then, although I paid $2 for it. And um, I mean, they wouldn't just have gaming books. It was just general. It was like these sort of cheap paperback books. You would also find, I don't have one to show you in front of me, but like Mad Magazine had a ton of these paperback books. And it, it was just sort of not like an impulse item, but it's like, yeah, I'm here looking at a magazine. Oh, that book looks interesting. And it was maybe just something to read while you were in the bathroom or something. I don't really know. Um, but, you know, it was the kind of thing where you would see these, you know, you'd be at the drugstore with your mom or something. And, and you know, you'd see that like, oh, you know, can I get this book? And it's only four dollars. You know, it's it's the price of a few candy bars. Um, these don't have any pictures in them, at least the one I'm looking at doesn't. And it's just one chapter is is one game. Like here's the chapter on Russian attack. And, um, you know, it just gives you like some different tips and whatnot, you know, nothing, not that big of a deal, but, uh, you know, back in, in what I would consider to be like the heyday of video game collecting, when I would go out to the thrift stores every weekend and just always come home with stuff, I, I really got in the habit of, you know, going and checking the electronic section. I would check the media section, which, you know, CDs, DVDs, cause that's where the games would be. And I would always check the book section and I would always find like old strategy guides or stuff like this. And it was just, it's just cool stuff to collect. I actually have a, a decent sized collection of, of books like this. Cause I just think they're really neat. And uh, so this was volume one. So this, that, you know, obviously that was the first one that ever came out. And then I've got uh, volumes two, three, and four. And then he came out with a separate, uh, how to win at super Mario brothers games. And then I have uh, one that's just called, uh, the best of how to win at Nintendo games. And I think I might have, uh, there's one, I think there's one for the game boy. I think I have it, but it's in the closet or something. And then, uh, just a few other books here. I've got, uh, the game counselors answer book for Nintendo game players. Uh, this is a pretty cool book. Again, it's just, a, it's just strategies and whatnot, but it's sort of in the, the format of like a frequently asked questions. That's so weird. I just opened it to Russian attack again. I, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. Um, it, it's funny because I was just talking about Russian attack on the intro to the next episode, which if you're watching this, you probably haven't seen it yet. Um, and I don't, I mean, I don't know what it has to do with, it just says it's from the Game Counselor Incorporated, so I don't think it actually has anything to do with the official Nintendo Game Counselors that you could call on the phone uh, back in the day. But it's just, it, like I said, it's frequently asked, quite like, how do I beat this or how do I do that? Uh, uh, here's Contra. A friend told me there's a 30-man code in this game. Is he just pulling my leg? And the answer, there is an extra man code that gives you 30 free men and it gives you the famous uh, Konami code. Uh, and then uh, just a couple other books over here. We've got uh, the NES Game Atlas. And this one's pretty cool because mostly what it is is like maps. Uh, games that would have maps or, or it will give you like whole layouts of levels. Like here we're looking at Super Mario Brothers 3. And it's just, um, and these are hand drawn. This is not just like screenshots that are stitched together. So that's pretty neat. That would have taken a lot of time. Um, uh, anyway, like you know, here's uh, Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. And I don't know if maybe Zelda 1. Here's Zelda 1. And then there's the overworld map. And uh, it tells you which shops have what items in them. Uh, so this is actually something that would have been extremely helpful for me when I had uh, The Legend of Zelda. But this probably wasn't out yet. I'm trying to find. Yeah, this came out in 1991. So that was too late. Uh, too little too late for me. And then the next one I won't bother showing you. It's just it says top secret passwords. And so you can imagine what that is. And then lastly, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. There's, there's somebody that he keeps asking me to do a read through of this and, um, I'll try to do it at some point. I, I don't know how that's really going to work, but, um, so this is the official Nintendo players guide 
get a close up there of uh, of that. And uh, this is something that would have been sold pretty much anywhere that you could buy Nintendo games. Like I guarantee you that you could have picked one of these up on the video game aisle at uh, at Toys R Us. And this came out a lot earlier, and I'm trying to find uh, a copyright date, if there even is one in here. But uh, here we go, uh, 87, yeah. So what this really was, it, it was just sort of a compendium or whatever of like every game that was out by then, and maybe even some games that were just like on their way out. And, um, you know, if you had just gotten a Nintendo and, you know, you weren't really familiar with the different games and you didn't know what to get, this would have been a great thing to have. So uh, as we're going to talk about in the next, well, two episodes for you from now, uh, after the Zelda episode, this is something I really could have used because I just, you know, I would go to Toys R Us and just have no idea what I was looking at because, you know, all I had to go off of was the box art and the price. So uh, this would have been really cool. And it's, I mean, this, this book is just full of screenshots and for some games, it's just like a little paragraph or something. And other games have like full write-ups. Like here's the Goonies 2. And that's got like a full write-up. And so not only would it be something to help you familiarize yourself uh, with the game, but um, in a lot of instances, it was also a hint book. And that certainly is the case uh, for, uh, for this game, for Goonies. Uh, so... That is it. I just, like I said, I figured since I was going to be standing uh, with the shelf, people were probably going to be uh, curious about things, and so I thought I would share them with you. And um, so, if you're if you're watching this right when I uploaded it, uh, you the the Legend of Zelda episode, which is going to be episode three of Flashback, will be up very soon. I, I just finished recording my whole you know telling stories section, the intro section, if you want to call it that. And then as soon as we're done here, I'm going to go plug my Nintendo into my uh, whole capture setup. And uh, I'm going to spend the afternoon uh, playing some Legend of Zelda. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. So uh, uh, I've actually been waiting for a long time to show you guys some of this stuff. Um, so I'm glad I was able to use this as an excuse to do so. Hey, so uh, oh, so two more things. Sorry. Uh, so I just watched what I just recorded. And uh, first thing, how to win at Game Boy games. I knew I had it. I'm not crazy. But uh, I, was, I was watching the little story I told about uh, Mr. Gloob. And I kind of feel like I didn't finish it. Uh, so, you know, I asked him, like, oh, are you connected to the, the company? He's like, oh, yeah, that's my family's company. And then uh, what, I was kind of excited. Like, that was cool. And rather than even mentioning the Game Genie, because I didn't have a Game Genie back then, I was telling him about Micro Machines. And, I, you know, and I, I wasn't trying to fawn over the guy, but I was like, oh, you know, I, uh, Micro Machines. Because I remembered the commercials with the guy that, you know, talked real fast. And, you know, I said, I love those things when I was a kid. And... You know, probably because it's not like the guy's a celebrity, right? He's just, his family was the Gloob family. He was really excited that I remembered that and I brought it up. You'd think, he, you know, like, oh yeah, whatever. But he was like, he, he thought that was so cool. And I actually like, I sat in his living room for probably five minutes because he would... He went through his entire house because he was he was like, I got to give you a micro machine. He's like, I, you know, I, I already had the turntable. It's ready. He's like, no, you just got to hold on. I, I have to find you a micro machine. And uh, sadly, he didn't. It was fine with me. For me, it was just a thrill, uh, you know, to meet the guy and just, you know, be able to say, hey, you know, thanks for, you know, making all those toys that I loved when I was a kid. But, um, but I, you know, he was just, what a nice guy, you know, and... and uh, he wasn't able to find me a micro machine, but what was funny is he ended up bringing me, uh, I don't even, I'd never heard of it. It was some girl's toy and it was still brand new in the package. And he's like, here, I, this is only, this was the only toy I could find. And I was like, you know, I, I thank, I turned, I said, thank you very much. I don't, you know, I don't, you keep it or, or what, I, you know, I was trying to be nice, but it's like, I don't, I don't want to take it from the guy cause I don't really want it. I didn't want him to give me anything to be honest with you. But, uh, uh, and then I ended up having to go back to the guy's house again cause he, he, forgot to give me something and I, I always thought it'd be funny if I could bring him like a little micro machine and have him autograph it you know like a little tiny autograph but uh anyway I just wanted to tell that second part of the story because I felt like that was the best part of the story I didn't tell it like I had to wait he looked through his whole house trying to find me a micro machine uh what a cool guy anyway uh thanks for watching and listening to my stories and uh, we'll see you again soon